Overwatch. We have contact with the native in the old sawmill. We've wounded her, but it looks like they set traps around the perimeter. I've got one casualty so far. Doing a sweep. Not let the target slip away. We need to know why they were following, probably. <laughs> Bravo hasn't run into any more down. resistance along the way. I got it! I'm taking fire! <laughs> this ends here and now! If there's someone in here, it's safe. You can come out now. Nothing, but definitely big enough to hide in. Got to check the last one. Got to be hiding in here somewhere. Maybe there's a trail. Blood. The hurt. Stop! No closer! I'm not with Trinity. My name is Lara, and your gun isn't loaded. I can see the cylinder is empty. The firing pin never worked anyway. You're hurt. I just need to... Sit down for a moment. Lara, was it? I'm Nadia. I could use your help. What can I do? My grandfather snuck out of the village in the night. I think he's headed for the Wicked Vale, where the witch Baba Yaga lives. I was trying to catch up with him when the invaders caught me. Before I was born, the witch killed my grandmother. Grandpa always talked about revenge, but I never thought he'd actually go through with it. There isn't much time, and I'm in no condition to go myself. We have to find him. I'll head out that way and see if I can pick up his trail. Oh, thank you. The path to the Vale is through the cave to the east of here. I found a radio on one of the invaders you killed. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. I can monitor the invaders frequencies from here while I patch myself up. I'll let you know if I hear anything useful. What more can you tell me about the wicked veil, Nadia? My people stay far away from that place. They have for centuries. When the Soviets were here, they tried to build an outpost in the veil. <sighs> But they angered Baba Yaga, and she drove them all mad. Grandpa told me all about her. She lives in a magic house that can walk with the legs of a bird. Do you believe all that? The house with the bird legs? I trust Grandpa. He was in the Gulag when the Soviets took my grandmother into the Vale to help them study the ruins. 
The witch killed her, and he's never forgotten that. But a witch straight out of a Russian folktale? It sounds unlikely. Just be careful. Something is in the veil. Nothing good happens in that place. Laura, hang on. I'm picking up a transmission. You need to hear this. definitely happening out there. Whatever it is, we'll get to the bottom of it. Like Grandpa made it that far, at least. You're almost into the veil. Nadia, I think I found your wicked veil. I don't know if it's Baba Yaga, but there's something out here. Be careful. This is her land. Initial contact was made with the elderly native male at 0700. At first, we believed he was participating in an assault on the facility, but he proceeded away and through an unmapped canyon. We received authorization to pursue at a distance, and already we've encountered ruins and other promising signs. We're trying to keep calm out here, but this looks like a big find. That discovery bonus is as good as ours. Dreaming it isn't real, it can't be. Just keep moving. <laughs> Laura. No, it can't be. No, wait. I'm close, Laura. I'm close, Laura. I'm close, Laura. Wait, where am I? How, how far does this path go? It's not real. Not him. 
Dad, stop, please don't. God, no, got to get out of here. There is a truth behind all of this. I just want to leave, please. No, no, this isn't. Someday, someday, someday. You'll understand, you'll understand, you'll understand. You'll understand. <laughs> Who are you? Come and see. I think I was hallucinating. God, I hope I was. Hallucinating? There, there is a flower in a valley that can bring on visions, but the effects are too weak. Any idea what this place is? I see ducks and pipes. Soviet from the looks of it. It has to be the outpost the Soviets built to study the ruins. My grandmother was a scholar, and they brought her here to help with her research, but that was the last time Grandpa ever saw her. There was only one survivor, an officer, who stumbled out a few weeks later. He said the witch made them do things. Ivan, I thought it would be simple. Most of these rough, stinking thugs take what they want from the prisoners. I chose Ivan because I thought he would bend, but it is worse than I thought. He is a good man. He does not want to be here any more than I. That sentiment holds little weight when he eats well and sleeps with a blanket. 
but I credit him with a moral compass these others lack. This place sickens him. He knows his part in it. Hates what he does. I caught him pushing back when he thought no one was watching to calm his guilt. I told him it was not enough. Showed him how to do more. We worked well together. Planned our escape. But it is too late. I am pregnant. We are damned. Someone's been in here, recently, building on top of the ruins. What do you see? Some sort of makeshift distillery. It smells just like the flowers. Shit! Of course! She's refining the pollen, weaponizing it. There's no magic here, Nadia, just someone very clever. Wait, but if it is just a person, then wouldn't the pollen affect her too? If she can resist it somehow, then so can we. I never held my daughter. They took her from me on the surgeon's table. I tried to fight, but they are many, and I am weary. Then they dragged me away, split our three hearts apart. They have taken me to a hidden vale where ancient ruins stand. They tell me if I cooperate, I will see my family again. I will never trust these monsters, but I do not have a better plan. There are curious flowers here. Exposure to the pollen has left my captors rattled, and they will go no further than our little outpost. They brought me here in the hopes that my expertise in botany would help them find a counter-agent. <sighs> At last, the state has a use for me. I nod and smile. I play the part. But they cannot break me again. For my daughter. For Ivan. I will live. It's been weeks since these bastards dragged me from the Gulag, from Ivan and my daughter, to this strange vale. They have tasked me with finding some way of counteracting the unusual effects of the pollen that hangs in the air. Now I believe I have a formula that may work. An extract from the seed pods of the plant, the liver of animals that consume the flowers and have metabolized the toxins, a phenothiazine derivative. The last ingredient is a risk. They have it in large quantities around the Gulag, where it is used as an insecticide. It may also act as a rudimentary antipsychotic, bearing a chemical similarity to other compounds I have studied. 
or it may be poisonous. I will try the mixture on myself tonight. I found something. One of the prisoners wrote down a formula that might counteract the effects of the pollen. It has to be for my grandmother. The witch killed her, and now she's gonna help save Grandpa, just like in one of his stories. Uh, Nadia. Have faith, Laura. Hop back to the Soviet installation where we met. I'll help you find what you need. I don't have the words to describe what I just saw. I went inside the wicked veil looking for Nadia's grandfather. I barely escaped with my life. It was like a fairy tale but through a broken, filthy mirror. And Dad, I know intellectually it was all in my mind, but the gunshot is still ringing in my ears. There's something terrible going on in there, and while I don't believe that it is magic, it is extraordinary. I have to find out what's behind all this, but first, I have to find a way to see clearly. All right, Nadia, I'm back at the installation. Any advice on where to start looking? Okay, first, the seed pods. The flowers grow inside the caves around there. There's never enough of them to make you sick, so you should be able to gather some safely. The livers should be easy. The deer around there feed on the flowers, so you'll just need to track them down. As for the insecticide, I have an idea where we might find some. Grandpa taught me to read Russian, so I'm going through some old equipment manifests to see if I can find out where they stored it. I'll let you know when I find it. All right, I'll start gathering the other supplies now. the flowers. Just need the seed pods now. you'll want to hear. I'm patching you in. Bravo team is still MIA. We haven't got any transmission since the distress call. We're gonna need to send a rescue party. Finish up your patrol around the Soviet installation. See if you can pick up the native girl's trail. She's involved in Bravo's disappearance somehow. And we need better intel before we send more of you in there. Copy that. Can you get somewhere safe? I'm in one of those old safe houses and I have snares set outside. Worst case, there's a tunnel underneath I can use to escape, but I still need to finish going over the manifest. Is this... normal for you, Laura? I'm not used to it. You know, people trying to kill me. I don't think it's something you can get used to. Just... stay safe. from grandmother's notes? Phenothiazine. I think I found it. They stored it in the lower levels of the copper mill where they used it to deal with the termites in the summer. Are you sure it's the same chemical, Nadia? 
I'm sure it's the chemical grandmother's recipe mentioned, but I am not sure that it will be safe to drink. Suppose we'll find out. I'll head there now. Found it. I'm mixing the ingredients now. Any word on that patrol? Just picked up another transmission. They're on the move. Where are they now? They're... oh no. They're headed straight for you. You might be able to sneak past them, but it's probably too late. Cover. Sorry, Laura. Damn. See if the antidote works? I'm not exactly looking forward to it, to be honest. If it does, I'll make my own and meet you at the Vale. I'll let you know when I get there. Now you already know, I am going into the Vale to kill the witch, Baba Yaga. I have gone to seek revenge for your grandmother. There are newcomers in our valley, armed men arriving in helicopters. I do not know what they want, but I know if I am to go, this is my last chance. You deserve to know the truth, to know why. Your grandpa is not a wise man. I have become, with hard work, a good man, for your grandmother's sake. But it was not always so. I came from the West, where even a small village has thousands of inhabitants. I was a lazy young man, and I dreamed of an easy life when I joined the party. A comfortable desk in the big city. But they sent me here, to the ends of the earth, to watch men and women work and starve and die to participate in their punishment. I knew it was evil, but I did not know how to fight until I met her. Only enough for two doses. Got to make them count. It's working, Nadia. Everything looks... normal is the wrong word, but nothing like the last time. Good. I've made my own antidote and enough for Grandpa, if we find him. I'm on my way to meet you now. Scarecrows, of course. This can't be the same place. I was lost in here. 
half expected him to still be here. When the guilt of working in the Gulag became too strong, I would lash out. A stolen screwdriver, misplaced paperwork, futile gestures that would never balance the scales. One day, I was caught taking a stupid risk. Your grandmother, Serafima, she spoke up, took the blame. They beat her, mercilessly. But I was saved. When I found a moment to thank her, she spat at my feet, told me I had risked my life for nothing, challenged me to do more. You have so much of her in you, Nadia. At first, I thought her cruel. She gave me no credit for my little acts of disobedience. That place, the gulag, it, it crushed hope and ate what little scraps of dignity remained. Every day I did not fight it with my whole heart, she said. I was complicit in atrocity. She demanded my honesty because she knew I was capable. It was the greatest kindness anyone had ever shown me, and I loved her for it. All wrong. Lost the old man entering the Vale. Lost Fisher. Lost Parker. Just gone. No trace. <sighs> Can't trust the eyes. Seeing things. Corpses. Worse. Things that walk. So huge they hide the stars. <sighs> Can't tell what's real. Not sure there is a real. Is it the eyes? The eyes have to go. My hands are steady now. Billings goes first. Stop! Hold still! Nadia, what do you know about these ruins out here? Even before the witch made her home there, our people avoided the Vale. The Founders were building a shrine out there, but something happened to them. None of us have been in there in generations. Be careful. Even if your visions weren't real, that place is still deadly. We decided to wait until winter passed. We hid supplies. We made maps. We planned. I got her a work detail indoors. She helped me find ways to slow the grinding gears of the Gulag. If I could disable a hydraulic lift, I could keep a hundred men from one day in the mines. Cut the wiring of a few trucks. There would be no special work projects for another week. I took greater risks. But once I had met your grandmother, I could not return to the sin of ignorance. We knew that the child would complicate our escape. And she hid it as long as she could. And then, without warning, they took her away. Our daughter was given to a nursemaid among the native prisoners. And they dragged Serafima away to the Vale. I tried to stop them, fighting in the open. I stood in front of the transport truck, prepared to kill to save her. But there were too many of them. I screamed my farewell as they dragged me away. And I don't know if she heard. Just wolves. Damn.
I'm up on the first of the ruins now. This doesn't look like a shrine. This was something functional. I see ropes and wooden gears. The Founders built lifts elsewhere in the valley to move people or supplies between the peaks, but they've all fallen apart now. That has got to be what it is. See if you can make your way up to the top. I'll be right there. I'm in the canyon now. I'll let you know when I've arrived. It is my great honor to have been given the responsibility of overseeing the construction of a shrine to the Apostles, out in the Far Vale. The site is on the very borders of our newly founded city, through a distant canyon. The natural waterfalls and geothermal springs grant us an amazing opportunity to use our combined knowledge to create a place of solemn worship and reflection that glorifies not only the memory of the Apostles, but also our own recent advances in construction. Already we have outpaced the empire we left behind. We will arrive in the morning and break ground on a shrine to honor our past and the future of our city.
to run. I'm almost there, just behind you. Don't go anywhere without me. Oh, look at that! The witch has kept the lift running all this time. It looks like she even made a few improvements, but I don't think those ropes will survive many more trips. It only needs to make one. Two. I'd like to come back down, eventually. Try pulling that lever over on the platform. Maybe it will get us moving.
Your witch is clever. Everything in this veil is arranged to perpetuate the myth of Baba Yaga, and the pollen does the rest. Last time I saw the lift, it looked nothing like this. So what did you see? Just as the legend says, a house walking on giant bird legs, but without the pollen, it's just an old contraption. I'm sorry. I was so sure of Grandpa's story. She's Russian, someone who knew me as well. Nadia, it's possible that your grandfather will know who she is. He was a prisoner in the Gulag, you said. I didn't say that. Not exactly. Grandpa was a My grandmother was the prisoner. She was a brilliant scientist, and they brought her out to the Vale to help study something in the ruins. But then the witch came. Grandpa never saved himself. Killing the witch won't bring her back, but I understand. Let's just hope we can reach her in time. Nadia, come quick! No. Nadia? How? Oh. Uh, it's the pollen. Here, let me. Grandpa, can you hear me? I tried. I couldn't save her. I tried. Shh, it's okay now. I'll stay with him, Laura. It's time. You only have one more dose remaining. Make it count. put me with the other Russian prisoners. I could see the hate in their eyes, and I didn't blame them. To them, I was just another instrument of their humiliation and degradation. I didn't tell them what I tried to do. It could never be enough. When the revolt came, I was ready. The native prisoners, the ones the Gulag recruited from this very village, were kept apart from the Russians. They had known of my resistance, and that kept them from killing me, along with the other guards. I held my daughter, your mother, for the first time, as the Gulag burned around us. The people of the village took us both in, and against their own superstition, agreed to help me rescue your grandmother from the veil. She has to be inside. This is it. Bravo team. The missing soldiers, they're here. It's her. Always been her. At the margins, in the dark, always there. She, she is what we came here for. We just didn't know it until now. She is the center of the world. She can make the fog swirl and choke our minds. She can give us clarity. She spoke her name, Baba Yaga, and our wounds healed. With another word, she split us open again. We are nothing, and we are hers. We will do as she commands. We were made for this. Oh God, what has she done to them? No, I need that last antidote. No. 
This is the last of it. Ah, no! When you are dead, you too shall serve me. Taro et They're just men. You can do this. Thank you. 
No more. I know who you are. I can only imagine what you've gone through to stay alive. <laughs> you have no idea. It's over now. You don't have to live like this anymore. Serafima. Little T. But you died. They, they told me you died. Will she be all right? I don't know. But it won't be easy for any of you. Family never is. Oh, I know. I know. Thank you, Laura, for everything. I'd give them a little time alone while I look around some more. I shut off the last of the boilers inside. You should be able to explore without, you know, going mad. This place is incredible. I would have made my home here too. She lived out here just miles from us. I'm gonna look around. Nadia's grandparents, split apart by the Gulag, are reunited. They all have a long and arduous road ahead. Seraphina wore the mask of the witch for so long, I don't know if she will ever be able to fully return to the world. And Yvonne dreamed of killing the witch to get revenge for his lost love, but they were the same woman all along. That wound he nursed for decades won't heal overnight. They're survivors. We all are. But it will be difficult. It will feel impossible some days, I know. At least they'll have a fighting chance, now that we know the truth. It may not be enough, but it's a good start. Final notice to Lara Croft, a current tenant of premises. This is to serve as your final notice for the purposes of terminating your ownership of Croft Manor. You are required to immediately vacate and surrender possession of said manor to Atlas de Mornay, executor of estates. Lara, it is unfortunate that you have forced my hand in this matter, but so be it. As you know, your parents appointed me executor of the estate in the event of their absence. Since your mother disappeared, her death was never technically declared. And given the circumstances surrounding your father's death, 
it's no surprise that he never drafted a formal last will and testament to account for this circumstance. Unfortunately, you have no legal claims to the estate. I'm willing to negotiate a modest monthly stipend from your trust, but only if you leave the manor by week's end. Don't fight me on this, Lara. Your mother wouldn't want that. Sincerely, Atlas. There has to be a will or some kind of evidence of what happened to Mum in the manor somewhere. Dad's safe. My birthday crown. <laughs> I was so proud of that thing. <laughs> That's my handwriting. My penmanship was pretty good. Well, this is a hell of a thing. I met someone tonight quite unexpectedly. But it shouldn't have been, it seems. I've been so buried in my work, so distracted by my latest revelations, I never bothered to notice my surroundings. But there she was, sitting at my table in the library. Her name is Amelia. And apparently she's been studying right next to me. Art history, of all things. I shared some of my research against my better judgment, but I wanted to see how she would respond. And she did not disappoint. I felt as if I was suddenly engaged in a mental game of chess, moving and counter-moving in argument. At one point, that poor old librarian had to shush us as if we were children. I feel so foolish for not having noticed her earlier. She's a brilliant woman who's challenged my ideas for the first time in memory. In truth, I don't know if she's feeling as exhilarated as I am right now, but I dare say our conversation was mutually stimulating. For the first time in a long time, I find myself thinking about something else besides my research. I hope she returns for another round tomorrow. My parents made a good team, challenging each other from the start. Dad would have liked me to go to Oxford, but I insisted on UCL. <laughs> yep, looks real. Roth once offered to forge me a fake diploma to show Dad. Hmm, needs a combination. It's got to be in Dad's papers somewhere. Maybe in the library. Dad's map of the forgotten cities of northern Syria. He was closer than he knew to finding the Prophet's tomb. Dad's book about immortality myths might be useful in my research. I finally introduced Richard to the family. It went precisely how I imagined. I see but polite grace from mother, indifference and disinterest from father, and thinly veiled contempt from Atlas. Of course they don't approve. To them, Lord Croft is the man who took away their beloved daughter and ruined her long-standing engagement, though I was never going to marry that repugnant Earl of Farringdon anyway. One might think they would be happy that I was being courted by a genuine lord of the realm. It just happens to be Richard Croft. In their eyes, the man who single-handedly ruined a once great family. But there's nothing to be done now. Watching how Richard dealt with their subtle insults and disrespect. Such grace and calm. I know he did it for me. <laughs> I think I'm falling in love with this man. It will break my mother's heart, but I cannot live the life she imagined for me. My time with Richard has only made this clearer. It must have been hard for Mum to go against her family's wishes. I'm glad she did. Uh. 
One of Dad's Yoruba masks. A gift from a friend he met on an expedition in Nigeria. This is probably my grandfather, Benjamin. A picture with Dad and Anna. Never liked wearing dresses, but the color was nice. The door to the library. <laughs> this is the map I made for my first expedition with Dad. It shows a path to the library through the servants' passages. Locked. Hmm, there's got to be another way through. Dad's artifacts from the Nile Valley. I always love looking at these. Dad became interested in immortality myths after his expeditions to Egypt. Hi, Dad. I've been thinking about Mum lately. I wish I knew more about her. How did you meet? What was she like? Winston told me that she was a brilliant artist. Are some of her paintings locked up in the West Wing? And I guess I just want to know, did she love me, Dad? Did she ever say that she did? Maybe I'm just being silly, but will you tell me more about her the next time I'm home from school? The Grand Hall. Always loved playing in here as a kid. This will be one of the first things to fix. A phoenix figurine. I bet this appealed to Dad's idea of immortality, of rising from the ashes and being born anew. belongs to Anna. Most of her belongings are in the guest house. What was she doing in here? <laughs> Someone has a sense of humor. You know the West Wing is off limits. I'm sorry, I, I just wanted to see. We've been through this. Was Mum's room in here? Just stay out of there, darling. Dad was always so protective of the West Wing. Locked. Need a key to open this. What are you doing sitting there on the floor, Mistress Lara? Looking at the compass, thinking. What about, if I may inquire? Just thinking about discovering faraway places, about finding adventure. <laughs> I'm sure you will, my lady. You've the soul of an explorer. But don't grow up too fast. The author came in the post last week. 
and I still haven't told Richard. He flew ahead to Tibet, where I will meet him shortly. I never told him I was submitting my work. Never thought there was a chance of being accepted. Oh, but a gallery tour is not something I can pass up. The show will take me away from England for over a year. I'll begin in New York and travel across the United States and... Oh, God! I'm giddy even writing these words. When Richard and I were married, I was prepared to relegate my painting to a hobby. But it was Richard who objected, who gave me my atelier and studio. Without that support, I might still be painting boring landscapes. Now I can't shake the foolish sensation that leaving would be a betrayal. He will laugh at that and insist I accept, even though I know it will break his heart to be apart. He never once asked me to sacrifice any part of my life for his. I have, of course, in a thousand small ways over the years, but he would never ask. The discussion can wait, and I will join him in Tibet. I won't cast a shadow over his find. I will be by his side in his triumph, as I know he will stand by my side in time. Another one of Dad's immortality artifacts. I think Roth bought this for him from a trader in Greece. Hey Jonah, sorry for not getting back to you sooner. I've decided to do some research at the manor. A lot has happened and I need some time to think about what I want to do next. This old place is filled with memories and secrets. Uncle Atlas has tried to keep me out of here for so long, I don't even know if I want to keep it. But after everything that's happened, maybe I can find out what it still means to me. If it's worth fighting him for, I'll let you know how things worked out when I'm back in London. Got to remember to pack this for my next trip. Should be able to explore the dark now. Hmm, not sure. I really need to brush up on my ancestors one of these days. Well, hello there, Sir Lancelot. Don't worry, it won't be boring your sword this time. Amelia, the news has reached Mother. She knows that you broke off your engagement with the Earl of Farringdon. She is beside herself with worry. But, for the moment, she's controlling the narrative. As far as anyone knows, you're just having innocent second thoughts. But the moment your affair with Lord Croft goes public, it will be too late. Our name will be as ruined as this man you've chosen to bed. Don't you see that you're being selfish, Amelia? Please, consider your family. You're a de Mornay. Everything you do has a greater effect on us all. I'm coming down to London soon. 
Don't do anything rash until we have a chance to talk. <sighs> Falling apart. Maybe I should just let my uncle have this place. They say a good test of a relationship is how well you travel together. Well, I'd say Amelia and I have passed that test with flying colors. Indeed, these last few months in Egypt have been nothing short of extraordinary. She and Roth get on like old uni chums. In fact, the two have spent more than a few nights drinking and playing cards into the wee hours. Despite her decidedly proper upbringing, Amelia's taken to roughing it more than I ever have. She fits in and connects with the local populace with such amazing empathy. Because of her, I've had a bit of an unexpected breakthrough in my research. She managed to convince an artifact dealer in Old Town to sell me a magnificent and quite unusual Tibetan scroll. From what I can tell, it seems to contain details surrounding an immortality ritual of some sort. I think it's time for me to take the next step with Amelia. In fact, I don't think I can wait any longer. I will ask for her hand tomorrow in the bright Egyptian sun amidst the dust and ruins. I'm not surprised he asked her to marry him as soon as he got the idea. Amelia, I know we have had our differences in recent years. I've tried my best to keep an open mind about your relationship with Richard, but I just can't let you go on this ill-conceived expedition without saying my piece. You say Richard's theories have merit. You say that he may have actually stumbled upon some mythic unknown truth, but I have seen nothing to support such claims. And while your word may have been enough in times past, I cannot let you squander away what remains of your name and reputation and that of our family, truth be told, on some damned foolish crusade. I intend to go to Richard's investors and let them know exactly how he's spending their money, but I want to give you a chance to put a stop to this yourself. Please, don't go to Tibet. If not for me, at least for Lara. just as creepy as I remember. My lord, I hope this missive finds you on a successful expedition and in good health. Before I bore you with estate affairs, I wanted to let you know that our little angel has been into some mischief. As always, I indulged her in our usual game of chess. Over the course of the game, she broached the subject of her mother. She's having trouble remembering her now, and wanted to enter her ladyship's atelier, which you sealed off, to play on her mother's piano. It enraged her when she wasn't allowed to go in, of course. For someone so young, she has such strong emotions. Later in the day, she set a trap for me in the walk-in freezer, of all places. Before I knew what was happening, I found myself locked inside. Mrs. Sheffield discovered me an hour later, shivering and somewhat peeved. It took us an additional hour to find Lara in the grounds. I know all her hiding places, of course, but this time she really did not want to be found. Call it years of observation, but I can tell when she's out of sorts. My lord, if I may be so bold, she misses you fiercely. She is lonely for her father. Please consider a call as soon as you are able. Poor Winston. I remember being so angry. He was always so patient with me. I'm at a crossroads now. Good lord, that's such a cliché. But there's truth in it. 
Two roads before me. Both present joy and compromise. A life with Richard, adventure, intellectual pursuit, perhaps a new family. But also a man obsessed with something I cannot understand. Or a life of obligation, upholding the de Mornay name, embracing our traditions, not losing the family that raised me. Oh, this really is a rubbish choice. I don't want to lose them. But I love the life I've started to build with Richard. He comes with his own difficulties, but I can accept them. Will it be enough? King to Queen One. I'm going to win this time, Winston. <laughs> Clever girl. But you should know by now, winning isn't everything. Queen to King's Bishop Six. Check. you to say. You always win. Knight takes queen. What I mean to say is try to enjoy the journey, Lara. Don't rush to victory. Bishop to King Seven. I know, Winston. I just want... Oh, no! I didn't even see that. You should also know by now I'm not to be trifled with on this board, young lady. Mate. Oh, I am going to win. Someday. I would play chess with our old butler, Winston, on this board. Never could beat him. I always chose white. Maybe if I let him go first once in a while, I might have won. Everything is almost ready for Mistress Lara's birthday expedition surprise. It's been a bit of an all-hands-on-deck effort organizing the affair and keeping it secret. She's obsessed with Egypt, memorizing hieroglyphs and ancient Egyptian districts, so she'll be delighted with what Lord Croft has come up with. This will be good for her. She's been acting up of late, but I know she's just craving more of her father's attention. He's been so buried in his research. It'll be a nice moment for the two of them to reconnect. And I do believe he needs it as much as she does. Dad loved a good bottle of wine. Hmm, I can still smell his favorite Bordeaux. This is it, the basement of despair. Indeed, Lara, muster your courage, for this is the only path to the library of infinite knowledge. Look there, see the string? An ancient Egyptian tripwire. The keepers of knowledge want none to disturb their treasures. We must tread carefully. Let me lead. I know how to spot all the traps. I'm sure you do, my darling. Lead on. My stuffed bear. I couldn't have a tomb without a mummy. One of the wire traps Winston made for my birthday expedition. Hmm, water damage from the main hall above.
This bust of Anubis was from Dad's Egyptian collection. He must have put it down in the basement for our little expedition. to the manor. Dad used to say his granny hated all the bright lights. Hmm, there's a missing page. Amelia left tonight. She packed her suitcase and walked right out of here and I didn't even notice. Like those days in the Oxford Library before we even met, I just had my nose in a book lost in my own world. I am such a fool. I have let my obsession with this damned ritual of long life rule my better judgment for far too long, and it may already be too late. How could I have not seen this coming? I've made this mistake over and over, always putting my research before my personal life. But it's never hurt like this before. I simply cannot live without her. If I have to give up this accursed quest that has plagued me for so long, then so be it. I am going after her, right now, tonight. Okay, Dad's ledger has to be in here somewhere. Hopefully it has the combination to the safe. I've created a clever little map for Lara's birthday expedition. I used the invisible ink Amelia picked up for me in Morocco so many years ago. At the time, I remember being so annoyed by that rather aggressive street vendor, but she just smiled in her sunny way and paid him without a second thought. I assumed it was just a tourist scam, but it actually works. Turns out it requires a very specific kind of vellum and a heat source to illuminate the ink after it's dried. It should prove a nice challenge for Lara to puzzle out. <laughs> it appears Sir Reginald's helmet fell off. Oh, didn't I put it back properly? This music is familiar. It's beautiful. I always accepted that Richard's rather unorthodox research was just something I had to live with. But, but this time, the thrill of discovery has taken hold of me. I never imagined I could be drawn in this way. Richard Cable to tell me he's found the monastery. The symbol we deciphered in the scroll was the key to its location. I don't know if I honestly believe that this will lead to the fabled elixir of life, but I can't help but feel that a great secret awaits us there. My brother was threatening to shut down the expedition, but I managed to talk him down for the time being. Now I am going to meet Richard. I would bring Lara if I could, but she's still too young. She'll be in good hands with Winston, and when we return, her parents might just be a bit more famous. For God's sake, memorize the combination, you fool. Lara's expedition treasure. My favorite painting by Amelia. The day of our wedding anniversary. Okay, got to find those objects to figure out the combination to the safe. There's something else here. Dad's lighter. I don't remember him ever using it, though. 
The Croft family crest and initials BC. I wonder if this belonged to my grandfather. Okay, should be able to light the fireplace now. This is my handiwork. I used to love drawing pictures of tigers. Spent so many hours in here, reading, dreaming of my own adventures. I've reached the monastery. As Roth predicted, it was hidden deep in the Himalayas. And now that I'm standing on these high stone walls, I am overwhelmed by the sheer beauty of the mountains that surround me. It is simply breathtaking. But what adds to their spiritual majesty is the truth of this place. The monks welcomed me, as is their way, but they seemed to expect me. They must have known someone like me would eventually come seeking answers. I know this is the place. They've conducted the ritual before. I have seen the evidence, the distinctive symbols carved into the floors, the art displayed on the inner chamber's walls. They've created the elixir before, and they will again if I can convince them. I sent Amelia a message straight away. I want her by my side for this discovery. Hmm. Dad was looking for an elixir. Was it the elixir of life? I remember this now. Each district in ancient Egypt had a symbol and a number. I always preferred these symbols to the actual number hieroglyphs. Now, let me see, let me see. These two myths are referencing the same source material. But where did I see this image? Dad, I think it's this one, in the chapter on Egyptian districts. Yes, I think you're right, Lara. I remember the page with the illustration of Ra. My goodness, you've been paying attention, haven't you? This could be an important breakthrough. Does this mean I'm your research assistant? That and more, my darling girl. Takes me back. Those were good times. The best times. This was always one of my favorite books in this library. I used to trace hieroglyphs. quite a tumble off of this old thing when I was a girl. Still feel it in the shoulder from time to time. Hmm, blank, except for the image of a key. I remember this map now. It leads to the master key, but we made it with a special kind of invisible ink. It could only be seen with the heat of a fire. Hmm, I think I stashed one of Winston's master keys in here when I was a kid. <sighs> I can see the map. 
Looks like the key is hidden under a trunk near the bookcase. X marks the spot, as they say. The master key. This should get me into the West Wing. All right, this should open most rooms in the manor, including the Forbidden West Wing. Hmm, I think there might be more clues to find in the library. Mistress Lara, I took the liberty of preparing a tray, as dinner did not go according to plans. I've included, in addition to your meal, a few treats. I would appreciate it if you kept this between us, but I felt tonight called for something special. If you will forgive me the indulgence, your rapid exit from the dinner table had me concerned, and I wanted to impart something that I hope sets your mind at ease. I have known your father for quite some time. There is an intensity to his passion that can be frightening, but I recognize that same passion in you. You're more like him than you know. Never doubt that he loves you more than his research, more than his artifacts, more than anything in this world. Storms pass, and tomorrow will be clear and blue again. When you have finished, please leave the tray outside. Be well. Yours, Winston. The Pharaoh's crown from my birthday treasure hunt. How old was I again? Six? Eight? Hmm. I think this hieroglyph corresponds to a number, but which one? Okay, Dad's clues mention Mum's paintings and their anniversary. Hopefully I can find some answers in the West Wing. Family crest. <sighs> Worse than I thought. With Amelia gone, the manor is a different place. A dimness pervades, a quiet I can't stand. Even though Lara is too young to understand what has happened, she also senses the change. She's asked after her mother only once, and I'm afraid my reaction must have terrified her. 
I will need Winston more than ever these next few months to help look after her. I never quite realized how much grief can consume a man, but I am utterly consumed. I know I can't escape the pain, but I will try my damnedest to avoid it. I will seal the West Wing for as long as I live in this place. It will remain exactly as Amelia left it. Perhaps someday Lara can find her own answers there. After everything Atlas has done, how could you tell him about the expedition? It's just all been too much. I needed to talk to someone. He's still my brother. I don't trust him. You don't have to, Richard, but please, trust me. I'm sorry, my dear, but I know him. He'll take it to the papers. The investors will pull out. Then go. Without me. Tonight. I will take care of Atlas, and then meet you in Tibet next week. I was so young, but I still remember that terrible argument. It wasn't always an easy road for my parents. I think this was Dad's pocket watch. Hmm, looks like it stopped precisely at midnight. This is Dad. I suppose it's a family tradition, but I can't imagine having one of these made of me. I believe it took this trip to push me over the edge. I've been able to see Richard in his element, seeing him at his best and his worst. I've experienced the purity and chaos of his passion, and I came to realize I want his passion in my life every day. <laughs> so it's done. Richard wanted to wait another four days until my birthday, but I wouldn't have it. Once I make a decision, I prefer to get on with it. So we found a small chapel in Luxor that was just right. And with Roth and the others at our side, we married as the sun set over this remarkable land. Mother will never forgive me. Atlas will forever resent me. But I don't care anymore. I'm free of de Mornay obligations, free to pursue my own passions and live my life surrounded by those who will encourage and challenge me. I'm excited for the future, whatever it may bring. Tomorrow, Richard and I return home to London as the Crofts, forging our path together. Mum's wedding ring. I always wondered what happened to it. I am bursting with pride. Amelia is with child. It is amazing how everything in life can change with such a simple event. Obviously, we don't know the gender, but already we've discussed possible names. Perhaps Benjamin, after my grandfather? Or maybe Griffin. He was more infamous a Croft than even me. No, Amelia wouldn't have it. Besides, she's certain it's a girl. She favours a, a classic such as Scarlet or Kate, though I've made some headway with Lara. A subtle nod to the sun god Ra, and our days in Egypt where certainly this child was conceived. I find myself thinking about this new life we've created, of how much she might be like us. For all my research into myths of immortality, I may have ignored the most obvious answer to the questions that plague me. We live on through our progeny, our genes, DNA, experiences passed through the generations. Perhaps this is the simple truth of eternal life, and I've just been too stubborn to accept it. Dad may have discovered the secret to immortality without even knowing it. My mother's perfume. The smell. So familiar. I can almost remember her. Hmm. 
mum on her wedding day. She looks so beautiful. There's a date, October something, damn, the number is faded. Their anniversary was in October, but which day? Oh, I can't believe I don't know this. There's got to be another clue somewhere. I remember this. Dad gave it to Mum on her birthday. October 13th, Mum's birthday. Hmm, pretty sure my parents were married in October. I think it was close to her birthday. Mum's atelier. Dad sealed it soon after she died. He probably couldn't bear the idea of removing any of her belongings. My lord, we all hope your work was well received at the conference and look forward to your return. As is so often the case with these missives, I wanted to call your attention to an incident involving our little angel. It seems that Lara has been the subject of some ridicule amongst the other girls at school. From what I can gather, some of the other young ladies were teasing her for being too much of a tomboy. You know how Lara can get when pushed into a corner. Let's just say they won't be bothering her again. But I do think their words have had an effect. I believe Lara has been missing her mother lately. She's begun to worry that she isn't like the other girls. And having grown up with only a father, it shouldn't come as a surprise that she has trouble relating to them. I wonder if this new friend of yours, Anna, is it? Perhaps she might prove a welcome influence. It might be worth bringing her to the manor to meet Lara. In any case, I'll let you decide the proper time to do that. Please travel home safely. Yours, Winston. Untouched for years, exactly as she left it. I stood up to my family's criticism, stood in defense of Richard and our love. But as my new life began in Croft Manor, doubt set in. How could love flourish in these cavernous halls and endless passageways? Had I made a terrible mistake, I have never been more delighted to be wrong. Richard welcomed me to the manor, my new home, with a game. It was a clue, written in jumbled words from five different languages, but it pointed the way forward. The next clue was a seemingly blank piece of parchment in the kitchen, where the heat of a candle revealed a message written in lemon juice. I followed each step grinning like a child as I solved his riddles and chased the trail to its end. A white cloth stretched out on the lawn where a picnic was laid out. <laughs> we laughed and ate, and my doubt vanished with the last of the morning mist. Love can and will endure. You've almost got it, darling. Here, let me show you. Like this, see? <laughs> well done, Lara. Well done. I wonder how my life would have been different had she lived. Mum's paintings. Which one was Dad's favorite? I returned home this afternoon to collect the last of my paintings. I suppose I should say I returned to my family's home. 
Atlas was there, in one of his foul moods, and even as he dripped venom for Richard with his cruel barbs, I could only laugh. To think that I once listened to my bitter brother in matters of my own happiness. My dismissal only served to infuriate him more. I left him there in father's study, muttering to himself. On the drive back, as Winston took a longer route through the country, I looked through my paintings, Richard's favourite one among them, a simple abstract with blocks of red. I smiled, thinking about giving it to him. I was happy, and... I was going home. Hmm, blocks of red. Dad's favorite painting. Maybe something about that painting will help me figure out the combination. Okay, back to the study to open that safe. Mum with me is a baby. I've never seen this. Hard to believe I was ever that small. I don't have any memory of this. I wish I could remember doing this. Mum died too young. This was for a show in London of Mum's work. What I wouldn't give to see this today. Hmm, it says here, Amelia Croft plans to show her work in New York. I wonder what happened with that. Lara arrived tonight, though not without a bit of drama, but all is well. She's a healthy, beautiful baby. I've never seen Richard so happy. I'm sure he'll be celebrating with his favorite whiskey tonight. It's calm and peaceful now. Just the gentle sound of the rain and the small, sleeping breaths of this new life I hold in my arms. Lara, Lara Croft, my darling daughter. It's hard to put into words this feeling I have. We share a connection, something I never expected. A love so powerful and pure. Someday you'll feel it too. No matter where you go or where you find your place in this world, we will always have this connection. Dad, what do you keep in there? Nothing too important, Lara. Estate business and such. If it's not important, then why bother putting it in a safe? I should know better than to try and pull one over on you. <laughs> there is something important in here, and it's for you, should you need it someday. Well, let's hope you came through for me, Dad. Okay, found all the clues. Let's see if I can figure this out. For God's sake, memorize the combination, you fool. Lara's expedition treasure. My favorite painting by Amelia. The fair. I remember this. I remember this now. Each district in ancient Egypt had a symbol. To be in the clues. That worked. It makes me happy to know that Dad kept us safe. No, that's not what I'm looking for. I am numb. It is taking all my willpower to hold back the overwhelming grief. Amelia's plane crashed in the mountains. She died alone in the snow, waiting for me to find her. Oh, God, not her, not now. I cannot accept it. Life without her is too painful to imagine. 
I know what must be done. And I am resolved. I'm going to bring her back. Perhaps this is why I am here. Perhaps this is fate. A test of my faith in the truth I've sought for so long. Roth will fight me on this, but I can't face Lara. I can't look into her eyes unless I try. I must try to bring Amelia back. The monks are preparing the elixir now, and then we will see if all my years of hunting this truth was for naught. Dad, what did you do? Dad's sequel to his first book on immortality. He never got a chance to publish it. Handwritten. This is the only copy. Damn, this isn't it either. I was certain there had to be a will in here. Wait, what's that? Hmm, a blank page. Dad must have left this for me. It has to be important. A hidden message. I returned home this afternoon. A hidden message. What are these strange marks? They have to be some kind of clue. I remember this now. Each district in ancient Egypt had a symbol and a number. I always preferred these symbols to the actual number hieroglyphs. A hidden message. Remember this now. E that worked. Damn, locked in. Dad build all of this just to keep his research safe. Richard, I tried to see you in person last week, but your manservant hustled me away like some common tout peddling silverware. He told me you are heartbroken and you're not yet ready to see visitors. He told me you blame yourself for your loss. Well, to that, I say, you had damn well better. I hope it hurts. I hope every moment of your life from this day forward is a ringing echo of loss. I hope you live just long enough to feel that pain grow when you hoped it would diminish because you earned it. You stole Amelia from us. You ruined her reputation and poisoned her mind with a fantasy for children. In the end, you might as well have choked a life from her with your own hands. Do not contact me again, ever. But you must make arrangements for the future of your daughter. 
Have you considered perhaps it would be better if you followed Amelia sooner rather than later? As Lara's legal guardian, perhaps I could erase some of the damage you've already done to the poor girl. If not... I will do everything in my power to see to it that the Croft name is forgotten. Lara deserves better than you. So did Amelia. And so do we all. Atlas. Dad's collected knowledge. There must be so many secrets hidden in here. This was part of a set of statues Dad found in China. He thought it was linked to the Temple of Xi'an. Perhaps I should look into it someday. It's over. I have done all that I could, and my Amelia is still cold and dead. Roth first scowled at my designs, then he pleaded with me not to go through with the ritual. Not because he feared it might work, but because he feared what I might do when it failed. And it has failed. There is no doubt in that. I prepared everything according to my research. When I dropped the stone into the elixir and held it to her lips, I thought for the barest moment that it had worked. The hour was midnight and my pocket watch stopped inexplicably. There was a charge in the air like the moment before a lightning strike. For a heartbeat... I imagined that my life was being drawn from me, as one empties a glass in order to be poured back into Amelia. I would have welcomed death if the last thing I saw were her eyes, clear and alive again. But the moment passed. Amelia is still dead, and I was no Orpheus. We will return to the manor and lay her to rest. I owe her that much. You brought her home. She's here, somewhere. The renovations are proceeding in secret. The work crew Roth hired for the job have been paid handsomely to keep the details of the job out of the records, so I'm fairly confident no word will get out about what I'm doing. I've been careless with presenting my findings, attracting all the wrong sorts of attention. Roth thinks I'm being paranoid by building this secret vault, but I know I'm being watched. My work is too important and potentially too dangerous. It can't fall into the wrong hands. I need a secure place to keep it all safe. Dad's Tibetan scroll. I remember he used to pour over this late into the night. The missing page from the renovation plans. They didn't want anyone outside the family knowing about this crypt. There's an inscription. This is the Croft universe. Our knowledge is to the east, our respite to the west. Our future is to the south, our past is to the north. Our past to the north. Could there be something else beneath the manor? Amazing. Even in here, Dad went out of his way to hide his findings. Might be able to use this to access other parts of the manor.
Hi, Dad. So I know I only just returned to school, but when can I come out to the dig site again? It's just so boring here. We're doing all the stuff I already read last summer. I always end up staring out the window and thinking about our expeditions, and then I'm yelled at for daydreaming. I promise I'll be good and not disturb you and just work wherever you tell me. I just miss it, Dad. And I miss you. Lord Croft is resolved to seal the west wing of the manor. I try to talk sense into him, but he will not be swayed. And to make matters worse, I believe his experiences in Tibet have only further fueled the fire of his obsession. He's now up at all hours in his study, researching God knows what. And poor Lara, she is so confused. Too young to understand the tragedy that has befallen this great house. My dearest hope is that Lord Croft will emerge from his grief and embrace fatherhood and the love of his daughter. But I fear he may give in to his obsessive nature, that which Lady Amelia tempered in him so well. In any case, I will be a rock for young Lara. She will never sense tragedy and sorrow in me, only the love and support she deserves. Our knowledge is to the east, our respite to the west. Our future is to the south, our past is to the north. Incredible, this crypt was here all along. I expected a sort of crushing finality to grip me when we returned to the manor to lay Amelia to rest. Indeed, once the last of my funereal duties were performed, I fully believed that I would crumple to the ground next to her and expire, not from grief, but succumbing to the terrible exhaustion of the last few weeks. Instead, as the mausoleum stone slid into place, I felt a sort of peace and energy, one that I confess caught me entirely off guard. This was not the terminus of our story, and I was a fool to think so. Her body may be gone, but her spirit still resides here, in the manor, in me, in Lara. Her soul is forever twined with mine, and death is just a momentary interruption. I walked out of that cold quiet into a sunlight that burned my eyes, and I have never been more sure. Death is not the end, and there is work yet to do. My God, can it be? Dad, you did bring her home. My dearest Lara, it is difficult to write this, knowing these may only ever be words on a page to you. I wonder if you will remember my voice. Will you remember the way we used to play and laugh? 
Will you remember me comforting you when you were sad? Know that I'm still with you, Lara. My energy, my love, it's within you. It always will be. Use that energy to pursue your passions in life. Never let others determine your journey. You become who you are through your choices, through the love you give and the promises you keep. I hope you are happy, that you are loved and successful in whatever it is you choose to do. I am proud of you, my darling. Remember me with all my love. Your mother. Hmm, what's this? A letter. Lara, I have received the notarized affidavit confirming Amelia's grave and the discovery of the burial crypt within the manor premises. While I can't fathom why your father would hide your mother's fate from her own family, I cannot deny that any legal claims I may have had on the estate are now null and void. Croft Manor and the remainder of your father's assets are now yours in perpetuity to do with as you wish. If there comes a time when you require assistance in managing the estate, I hope you will consider contacting me to retain my services. Sincerely, your uncle. I've been so focused on defying my uncle, of fighting to keep his hands off this manor, that I never realized how much this place actually means to me. But since I've been here, I can feel the presence of my mother and father. I sense the entire history of my family and the deep roots we have in this place. I want to honor my parents. I want to honor all of my ancestors. The Croft family may be all but destroyed, but I will make our name and our home great again. I can still remember the last time I fired these. no use. This old snowcat isn't going to make it any further. We still don't have your GPS signal, but we're going to get you out of there. Just get somewhere safe and wait. No, not yet. I'm going ahead on foot. Trinity is going to be swarming all over this place before we can mount another expedition. The artifacts are out here. This might be my only chance. I'll signal you when I'm ready. Yeah, we figured you'd say that. I had to try. Good luck out there. We'll be waiting for your sign. Just save that for later. <sighs> Just going to hold on to this. Food should last until I need it.
that soon enough. Use a fire. <sighs> Won't spoil in this weather. Going to hold on to it. Something inside. I could start a fire here. <clears throat> At least it's warmer in here. Need to find somewhere warm. There, that'll do.
to get warm somehow. to get somewhere warm. A signal fire. I can call for extraction here. Could go around. They might have supplies. Better. Still need to keep an eye out for places to warm up. Maybe something useful here.
it's freezing out here. Need to find somewhere warm, or I'm in serious trouble. <sighs> Going to get cold out here. Keep me moving, but not for long. That's much better. Side. Not as cold in here.
Could use some food. Should keep me warm.
Much better. Should be warm enough to head out again. Damn it. Got to find food. About to get a whole lot colder. Freezing. I'll need a fire before long. That's more like it. All right, warm enough. be something inside here.
little bit warmer in here. Here we are. Hold up. Look at that. There's got to be more around here.
close. Ready to move again. Identify yourself. Okay, the fire is lit. I'm ready to go. I see the beacon, Laura. We're on our way. It has taken me 30 years of adversity, doubts, and ridicule to reach this day. It was the state who finally saw the worth in my work, saw the potential in raising up a generation of Soviet men to be something more. The first wave of test subjects, brave heroes, one and all, had to be euthanized. My... my work, I see now, would never have led to a generation of heroes as I once dreamed. I know one thing. I created a weapon to protect my homeland. For that, I am proud. All right, Lara, this is it. The chemical weapon, the infected Trinity soldiers, they're all coming from this old Soviet compound. This is the place. I've got the operations manual you dug up, so I can translate the directions to shut down the facility. If we can't shut down the machines, the toxin will drift into our valley within a day. Sophia's gonna keep us in the air, but we'll be nearby. Other than that, you're on your own down there. Poor Vision, but they can definitely hear me. Shut down those towers, and then get the hell out of there. And stay safe. I'll try. Oh, my God. 
you think Trinity knew what they were doing when they reactivated the facility? Hard to imagine anyone would do this on purpose. They must have been out here looking for the sword. <laughs> Laura, there's a weapons cache near you. Figured you could use all the help you can. What's out there? I need help! Stay silent, and we can get you out of here. We're lucky the toxin doesn't seem to affect women. Not yet, at any rate. I suspect it alters dihydrotestosterone production, which would explain the aggression, the rapid muscle growth, and why it affects men so quickly. Yeah, that sounds... sure. Outside the first of the towers now. Okay, when you enter, the airlock will shut behind you. You're going to have to find another way out once you shut down the machinery. <sighs> Hang on, you said you said not yet. Do you think we're at risk from the toxin after all? Possibly. It's a chemical weapon, Nadia. Right now, I'm more worried about the immediate problem at hand. No, th that makes sense. Sophia's gonna take us up a little higher. There's a prisoner right near you. Can you set her free? <sighs> Lara, bad news. When we shut down the towers, it's going to shunt the rest of the toxin to the central core. Which is what we expected, and we'll get it all in one place. But looking at the structural damage out here, there's no way the core is going to hold all that pressure after all these years. What's our worst case scenario? The core containment fails, and a concentrated cloud of toxin gets dispersed in the wind. As bad as it gets. Okay, there are 
four major systems in the facilities. The good news is, they should be color-coded and well-marked. There's the water filtration system. They'll be colored blue, and we'll have a circular icon with a water drop in the center. There's the fuel pump system, highly flammable, so it's going to be marked red, with a diamond-shaped icon with a flame in the center. Then, there's the main biological catalyst. Those systems will be marked green with a poison warning, a square icon with a skull and crossbones. And lastly, there's a radioactive waste system. Should be painted yellow and marked with triangular radioactive warning signs. I need to know where these components were made. Look for a country of origin. You should see a German flag. If you see the right flag, then you'll want to reconnect the red conduits for the fuel pumps. If not, then we need to start up the green generator for the biological catalyst system. That's it, Nadia. This tower's been shut down. Good. Now, it's going to vent all the remaining toxin to the central core. Once it's all in one place, we'll have to find a way to destroy it all. For now, find the exit on the roof and head back outside. a plan for the central core, but I don't think you're gonna like it. Let's hear it. If you do get to, I, I mean, when you shut down the last tower, the central core won't be able to hold all that pressure. It's going to fail. But if you can get inside and overload the machinery all at once, you'll trigger a catastrophic failure and the explosion will burn off the toxin. I hope. You're right. I don't like it, but it's all we've got. You know, for the three of us. Our team. I'm gonna get off the radio now, Nadia. Okay, but think about it. We could be the... Hurry, please. Stay as quiet as you can. We're getting out of here. Understood. You lead. Ah! <laughs> 
spotted a weapons cache. It's near your position. cylinder containing gas. You need to open it and look at the lights inside. Are they flashing all together? If so, then power up the generator connected to the radioactive waste system. If not, then find a way to reconnect the conduits to the radioactive waste system. Forget the alarm, they're coming! Nadia, you have the next step. I'm ready. Wait, no. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, we're looking for a manufacturer logo. It should be a big Soviet flag. See it? If you see the right flag, then find the green lever connected to the biological catalyst system and pull. If not, then we need to get the conduits for the water filtration system connected. Nadia, it's waiting for a second input now. Wait, that could be... No, no, okay, wait, yeah. That's right, there's a second step in here. Nice catch. Okay, here we go. If you're ready, here's the next step. Okay, take a look around. We're looking for pipes connected to the radioactive waste system. Do you see more than two yellow pipes? If so, then I need you to find a lever on the water filtration system and pull it. If not, then you need to find the red conduits to the fuel pump system and reconnect them. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's another tower down, Nadia. Excellent. Okay. I can see the toxin being vented into the central core. We're halfway there. Let's find the exit on the roof and head for the last tower. <laughs> There's a prisoner right near you. Can you set her free? Get me out of here. I'm not sick, I promise. Help me. Stay as quiet as you can. We're getting out of here. Of course. Thank you. red fuses inside the three fuse boxes. Is it less than eight fuses? If yes, then find and pull the lever connected to the water filtration system. If not, then I'm on the wrong damn page again, again. Stop, Laura, stop. I, I messed up. Okay, this is the right section, I swear. You ready? If you are. We're looking for a, a flag logo. Should be Cuban, I think. Red, white, blue. See if you can find it. If you see the right flag, then you'll want to reconnect the red conduits for the fuel pumps. If not, then connect the green conduits for the biological catalyst system. Find the second step. Okay, here it is. We need to look for pipes on the biological catalyst system, the poison ones. You might see at least one green pipe. Can you find it? If yes, then I need you to start up the generator for the, um, hold on, um, the biological catalyst system. Should be green. If not, then we need to pull the green lever on the biological catalyst system. one, Lara. We're almost done. You ready? Here it is. There should be a large cylinder containing gas. You need to open it and look at the lights inside. Are they flashing all together? If yes, 
then you need to turn on the generator for the water filtration system. If not, then you need to get the red generator for the fuel pumps powered back up. That's it, Nadia. All the towers are shut down. The central core can't handle the pressure. Containment is going to fail unless we can destroy the whole structure. You have to get inside there. It's the only way. <sighs> this is it. Got to destroy the central structure. Destroy those pistons. Oh, my God. 
wait until they're exposed. Everybody. 